between the huts. Oh, I was on this side then, right. on a chair, about five o'clock in the evening. And the cat came to the gate because there were no watchmen then. And here come this man and said, Alfredo Bowman. He kept telling about Dr. Sebi, but I didn't know any Dr. Sebi. But the thing that the people said that Dr. Sebi was telling them, I could only relate it to Alfredo Bowman. Wow. But I thought that you was dead. And I'm convinced that I was right because you're alive. I want to ask you a question. Do you know how you were privileged to go on that boat to go to the United States? I said, no. Do you remember a man that you liked very much by the name of Melvin McNabb? I said, yes. He said, that man paid the owner of that boat. The, man, the owner of the boat is named Felix Borden. He was a very nice man too. And he was a Sagittarius. And he had liked me, the owner of the boat. But this other man, Melvin McNabb, paid him money to take me to the United States. Well, wow, why am I privileged? So, Plony Jones, the captain of the boat, is going to tell me now why. He said, you remember you liked that man? I said, yes, I did. I like Uncle Mel. Why shouldn't I? But he paid for you to go on that boat to get rid of you in the United States and that he would keep your land. Mm. I said, no, he didn't. He said, yes, he did. I said, no, he didn't. Look at it right. Don't misinterpret. I said, Uncle Mel paid for me to go to the United States for me to come back as a doctor. Where is he? because he may be sick. He said, are you serious? I said, yeah, because I love him. He said, a woman killed him. Stabbed him 17 times. God damn. Dad didn't like hearing that because I like Uncle Mel. Of course I did. He had spunk. <laughs> he was a go-getter. Even though he wanted to take my land, that's what he wanted to do. That is not what nature had intended for him to do. So why should I get angry at him? I'm not going to get angry at him for his intent. I got to, I am not angry at him. And guess what? I went to America and became what I am. And the land that he wanted to take away from me is the land that I own in return. You see? Yeah. It didn't cause me any emotional pain. I like Uncle Mel. Like him now. He was a bad man, but he was a dead man. <laughs> you see? And <laughs> being that he was dead, uh, he didn't know that that had consequences. He didn't know that. He didn't know that. That's Uncle E too. Uncle E is a Dixman. <laughs> he didn't know that. I remember I got shot. <laughs> Lord shot me. But I was okay. Because I knew why. Because I, I was playing the dumb part too. I was always in the woman's face sexually. I like sex too. It was a thing that I thought that you had to do to fulfill a, uh, a relationship. Because that is what I learned from the adult. Man, if you fuck a woman right, it's over. Yeah. No, not motherfucker. You <laughs> That's a lie. That's not true. One item, because everything I've done, I was led to do it. You understand? I was led to do it. In other words, I was prepared to do it and did it, but I'm, what the credit I'm supposed to give myself? What kind of reward? Hey, nigga, be quiet. You're alive. And that's not enough? Well, you want something beside that? Do you?
But we never think about that. That's why one day I'm looking at with, with Taiwa. Me and Ty were looking at, at these cartoons. And one of the cartoons, the Muppet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am alive. I am alive. A L I V E. I am alive. A donkey is alive. A chicken is alive. And so am I. I am alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I kept hearing that. I am alive. That's a hit. You know what that means, man? That's everything. But in today's world, I'm alive isn't sufficient. I need diamonds on my body. Right. I need monuments. And I need a Rolex watch, man. I, I, I need my Rolex watch, you know? I need a Bentley or something. I, I, I need, and I need, and I need. Uh, Pablo, are you here to El Topo? El Topo? Well, again, you see, that comes out of your culture. El Topo is one of the baddest pieces you're going to ever see. Where this man, mm -hmm. wife died, his son was very much attached to his mommy. Mm -hmm. And boy, his daddy saw that and saw that this dependency is unreal. He told his son to gather all the things that he liked best. And in the thing that he liked best was his mother picture. He said, put it in that bag. And he took him in the desert. And he said, you dig a hole. And you put that stuff in there. Mm. And bury it. And as the boy jumped on the back of the horse going back, well, they told me the story. I didn't see it. But it's in El Topo. But I know this kind of energy comes out of Mexico. It's some deep shit. They put some deep shit on your ass. Look, number one, here's one for you. The woman that killed the, the naked man in in a uh, in a uh, in the museo. The British are able to take your clothes off. She said, take your clothes off. And they got him naked. And the man sit right down. And they could, <laughs> they could not understand why. But the oxygen was, in, was engulfing his body now and his brain, his central nervous system calming down. Oxygen, but we covered up. Because we have to obey the mandate designed by the industrialists, not the mandate of life itself. And whenever you step out of the mandate of life, you get into trouble. Big time. Because now you're violating life. And you're going to get away with that? Are you out of your mind? Look, you can violate Socrates and Plato, but you're not going to play with life. The two people or two things that you will not play with is life and that one I'm not bandit, self. Yes. I learned about self in Detroit yes. from a sister who was a school teacher. Well, the description she gave of self, I mean, you don't want to mess with self. Mess with anything else but self. <laughs> and it is so beautiful. So now we find ourselves, we find ourselves <clears throat> trying to make a decision in our lives or make a decision in our lives that will bring, a, bring about a degree of peace. Because that's all we're looking for, is peace. Just contentment, to be tranquil. Yeah, I could smile, I could listen to the birds, I could enjoy the butterflies. Of course, why not? But for us to really understand the mechanics behind that, we have to begin with life itself. What about life? There's an arrangement. There is an arrangement that is right on time every year. Spring is never late. Never. 
Summer is never late. Winter nor autumn. They come right on time. And those plants that we see that blooms every year, they come at the same time every year. What happened? Is there a computer in each of those plants that's going to connect them with the time in which they're supposed to bloom? No. That is a cosmic arrangement. Like that plant, like that bird that flies from the north to the south when winter arrives or when autumn arrives, he doesn't read any calendar. Oh, it is October or November the 27th. We got to start packing. Uh-uh. He picks it up in his feathers. And they all get the same message, and they are gone south. So now, as we begin to talk about the thing that we talk about, they should always be connected to the foundation of life. Why? Because it is electrical. It is electrical. It's compatible with us. This is about the ABCs of healing. The ABCs of healing. Of course, the beginning to understand it. You see, it's artificial anyway. Healing is as artificial as wearing a pair of shoes. That's artificial. Because you're not touching the soil no longer with your bottom of your feet to receive the minerals. But I'm not modern. I can't help it. I gotta watch not only with shoes but socks on too. Further disconnecting me. So to understand healing is very, very good. And we all should and we all could. And the purpose of understanding healing, it brings about what? Peace. It brings about love for self. So we begin the journey. Where do we begin with healing? Once upon a time, brothers and sisters and friends, listeners, we didn't have to know anything about anything in reference to making a decision to put something in our mouth. We did not have to read a book. Right. We didn't have a nutritionist. We didn't have any enzymes, protein, and vitamins. Why? Because all the things in our environment were alkali. We didn't have to make a decision whether this is good or bad or try to make that distinction. Now you better know it. You better know because right now we are engulfed and surrounded with the use of many, 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 many inorganic substance. Yes, we are. We are surrounded by it, immersed in it, and we want to get out of it. But to get out of it is to know that it is bad. And the only way that you're going to know that these things are not as complementary as we would like for them to be, you have to compare them with life. And that is Mother Nature, Pachamama. Now we begin the journey. In life, life substance has a base. They call it carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. This you find in the science of biochemistry. The foundation of biochemistry is the understanding that carbon, Hydrogen and oxygen yes. is the composition of life. Without these three players, life does not exist in that substance. This is why you could burn a, a carrot, you could burn beets. It doesn't burn to ashes. The only thing that burns to ashes is those things or are those things that are carbon based. They are what? They are considered native by the geologists. So we find carbon, 
hydrogen and oxygen. If the substance doesn't have these three as players in the core of its structure, you have an acid substance that is against life itself. Mm. Now, we are not living 500 years ago when our mothers didn't have to make a decision what she's going to feed her baby because she only fed her baby her milk. Her milk, and her milk was not impregnated with meat, with starches, because they simply did not exist. They did not eat any starches, which is carbonic acid. So now, to understand nature, you, you will see, as we begin to excavate, little by little, we find that nature doesn't produce any substance that has starch in it or present. Starch is counter life, against life. Nature did not produce a starch substance. That is a yardstick or a measure that you could use to be able to navigate through the maze because you have confounded things. You see, once upon a time on this planet, there were no comfrey, there were no whole wheat, there were no bulgur wheat, there were no oatmeal, there weren't any carrots or beets, there weren't any enchinacea or aloe vera, there weren't any golden seal and many, many, many others. Now, why were these things made? I don't know, but I know this, that these things doesn't play any part in the sustenance of life. So in the ABCs of our understanding as to what is and what shouldn't be in our presence or diet is to understand that everything that has electricity has to be starch-less. Mm. A substance that is starch-less is considered to be alkali. A substance that has starch is acid. Energy will not be obtained from nor found in it. So as we continue now with the ABCs of understanding what is healing, we have to understand life structure. Life structure. In understanding life structure, then you'll be able to select. You will be able to select from the forest the things that are life-giving. When I was in Washington a few years ago, I remember seeing a brother of mine, and we all love Jimmy Gray. He always had a liquid stick in his mouth. And most of us that begin to grow in the understanding of what is nutrition, many of us have used liquid stick as a nourishing agent. But in reality, liquid stick has more glycerinic acid than does sugar. It will hurt you. It will hurt you, why? Simply because it isn't a product that came from Mother Nature. So apart from understanding that in the structure of life, you find carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's necessary. But since we work every day and we're very busy, we don't have time to be going into the chemistry because it sometimes becomes confounded and difficult. But a good measure is, it has starch? Yes, well, it's no good for me. Simple as that. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to eat any whole wheat bread, bread, 
I'm not going to eat barley, but I'm going to eat spelt bread. Yes, I'm going to eat spelt bread. Why? Because it is starch less. I could eat injera that is starch less. And we could eat fonio, starch less, instead of rice. Because the objective is what? Peace. I want to find peace within myself. That's the only objective. It's not the amount of money that I could amass. It's not the amount of houses that I own because I could only live in one room. It's about the state of our health. And to understand or to treat that, to maintain this state of health that would privilege us, that would privilege us to live comfortable. That's all we want. We want to live comfortable. That doesn't cost any money. It just costs a couple of seconds of nothing, really. It doesn't cost anything. It just requires a level of understanding. In that understanding, you begin to make a better selection. It's not like 500 years ago. You didn't have to weave between the, the maze of negative because there weren't any negatives. Those things didn't exist. <clears throat> Day before yesterday, which was Tuesday, Mr. G, Marina, Orel, and last but not least, well, there was Pablo and the sister Chef Aki. They went to the Maya ruins. We all went together, but I didn't go in this time. I stayed in the car and let them go. Because I want them to hear without my mouth. When they came back, I said to them, I asked them, what did you all learn? Well, Queen of Chef Aki said, why so much blood? I said, I don't know if there were any blood. But the guy said there were blood. Oh, well, how would we know this, that there were blood, when the Maya ate only that which was alkali? It would have been difficult, very very, very, very difficult for him to leave a relaxed state and find a reason to kill someone, another human being. You see, we know this to be true, that the Maya didn't eat corn, rice, nor beans, but the guy told these people that the Maya ate these things. That is not really true. The Maya couldn't have been eating corn or rice nor beans. Why? Because these things are European, all of them. They are hybrids. They were brought to this part of the world with Christopher Columbus. Furthermore, these things had starch. Even until recently and even today, they have a grain here known as teosinte. They make tamales and they make tortillas, just like they use corn, but it is natural and it is starch less. Just go back to the Maya and the guy, telling these people, our brothers and sisters, that the Maya ate corn and they ate rice and beans. Now, this information wasn't true. What else did they say about the Maya that we have to suspect to be other than true? Many other things. So you see, we are surrounded with misinformation. And out of that package of misinformation that we learn in school and we pick up in the environment, we use that in our everyday life to make our decision. Well, I wasn't privileged to school, you see. I see things different. I see things differently, not better, because I'm not better than anyone. 
but I see things differently, much different. That difference is tied to Mother Nature. I never make a decision that isn't connected to life. The decision that I make have to be connected to life. The components have to be life given. This is why it's difficult for me to live in the world of belief. I don't believe in anything. I didn't have to believe in anything. I don't even believe in myself. Talk about someone or something else. Now, as for myself, again, that different that I see things by and in the environment of difference is precipitated by what I see in Mother Nature. I'm always in favor of the woman being the leader because that's what she really represents, the female gender. I have no difficulty with that. But in the last 50 years of my life that I've been married to various women, maybe I prevented them from exhibiting that energy and that tenacity of a female. Maybe there was something about me that prevented these women from exhibiting that power, that energy then, that energy. I can't blame them. But my interpretation is a little bit different. Again, different. But I recognize that the woman is the energy that maintains the society. So because that is in conformity with life. Again, the elephant family is only composed of females. And those of you who have grown marijuana, the one thing that you don't want in your field is a male plant. You yank him out. <laughs> Always the female. In fact, here in Honduras, I gave people the duck. The duck is a beautiful orchid. It's purple and lavender. It's a female plant. All of the plants in the forest that produces the flower, they have to be female because they are the ones that are reproducing. So that is this. The beginning of this ABCs of understanding that is required for us to put into motion when we come in contact with another human being. You have to recognize that you don't know that person and that you're going to have to allow them the privilege to express themselves the way they are, the way they see things, and you and I not criticize that because they are different. That's only the beginning, mm -hmm. to recognize others as you would your own self. There we find now the journey becomes stressless. You're not afraid to make decisions. And even if you make a mistake, or oh, you're happy because you can launch something. Right. But when you live in this world of philosophy, it doesn't allow you too much leverage. And then you feel like you have to walk and do things within a particular perimeter. No. That is mechanically arranged. So Bolingo, Bolingo is a word that came out of the Congo, which means love, love. Love meaning that we have reached a level of acceptance, of self-acceptance, and in so doing, I love everybody. I love everybody. Bolingo is to bring out of us the best that is locked by the acid condition that exists in our body today. We want to relax. We want to be in a stressless state. But to accomplish that, 
we have to select the proper food. Every cell is made up of a different structure, a different mineral. The bones are calcium, the blood is iron, the brain is copper and carbon. But what about the individual person? Does he represent a DNA that is different from everybody else? Yes. Yes. His DNA is different. But has that different been treated? No, it hasn't been treated. They give us the same medicine they give everybody else. Yet the physician would tell us that one fits all. But that's impossible. My genetical predisposition is different. I'm supposed to be treated different. Differently. Am I? No. So we at Bolingo, knowing that this has been omitted, this, this degree of understanding or this level of understanding has not surfaced yet. In 1988, the present philosophy of medicine was challenged. Not for the first time, 2,781 cases before was challenged the American Medical Association, the African Biomineral Balance was the only therapeutic approach that prevailed over the existing philosophy. But to do so, we had to rely again on the natural manifestation of life. We had to select from that particular perspective the compounds used to bring about the reversibility. No big secret. Electric body, electric food. It is said by many that when the body is sick, it needs a medicine to cure it. The African biomineral balance negate that position. When the body is sick, it means that it needs to be nourished back to health because minerals have been lost, energy has been lost. We have to retrieve that to bring about the degree of energy that would help this individual to manage their own daily life. That cannot be accomplished by medicine. It has never been accomplished by any medicine in the last 500 years. No. But the African bio-mineral balance that just came into existence just about 45, 47 years ago, we have on record that by putting into motion Mother Nature and using from her, her compounds or her natural materials, yes, we are proud to say at Bolingo that we cure AIDS, we cure sickle cell, blindness, diabetes, lupus, herpes. We should be proud that we have raised the bar and set the standards. Of course, why not? The purpose of science is to improve the present condition and you keep improving until you reach that level of ultimate perfection. Where that is, I don't know. But if there is an offering that eclipses all others, then we are obligated to raise with the level that has the new level that has been established. If we fail and we operate substrata, it means that we are being inconsiderate and we want to deny truth. No. That breaks down the whole fiber of the family. 
we at Bolingo understand that many of our brothers and sisters who are in the art of healing have reluctantly refused, they, no, they have refused and were reluctant to even join Dr. Sebi in 1988. He was told by many of them in New York that he got himself in this mess, he had to take his own self out. They were under the impression that I was going to lose. But by me knowing that the premise and the very foundation that I was going to use and establish in the Supreme Court of New York was solid as it could ever be, I didn't walk in there expecting to lose. They calibrated me with their barometer that they have measured their own self by. Mm -hmm. Where lo and behold, we prevailed. So today, we make the announcement that there isn't any disease that our family is beset by that we do not have the answer at Bolingo and that we with the African biomineral balance has not reversed. Yes, it is not an alternative. It is complementary. For it to be complementary, it has to be electrical. Thank you. Thank you very much.